Well, good morning to, to everyone. I, when, a, a few minutes ago, when I arrived to the backstage, I, I see the auditorium, and I remember that the first time I assist to a software conference with international speakers was here. So this is a really special moment for me. So thank you all of you for coming. We are going to, to start to explain a bit about Kubernetes and, and runtime security. Um, OK. This is me. I, on my side, I have to say that basically I, I love security and I love open source. I work at CISD, and the other important thing I, I like to, to remark about myself is that I'm father of twins. That means, that, that means two things. First of all, is that I develop an enormous amount of patience. So if you are afraid to ask, to ask, ask something or similar, please come to me and talk to me. That is not any problem. I'm, I'm going to try to help you. And the second one is that that is not free. I mean, I can never sleep a full night. So <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a bit cumbersome sometimes. It's a bit hard. I, I love my kids, but sometimes I, 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 I want to kill them all, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so on the technical side, I'm a Kubernetes member, and I'm the maintainer and the author of the Helm and Falco charts. And recently, I did the same work for, for, uh, for, uh, for operators for SysDig and Falco, too. And finally, I also love to, to say to my, by myself that I love Judo and Aikido. I'm a practitioner, and I feel that we spend too much time seated in a seat. So it's good to, to move the, the body, you know. And then, that's on my side. I, I, I want to know a bit more about you. How many of you are using some kind of the container platform in production? Wow, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm going to do another thing. I'm going to ask a favor. I'm going to, I want to take a selfie with you. So I, <laughs> my man is going to be really proud of this. So I'm going to steal you. So just 10 minutes, T 10 seconds, sorry. <laughs> OK, I'm going to do that, and I will publish it later. Cool. Thank you, guys. So let's go to start. In this talk, we are going to cover the following topics. The first is about the container runtime security. What, does is, what that means, the runtime security, how containers change the game. In the second part, in the middle of, I'm going to talk about Falco. Falco is an open source we are developing in, we started to develop in SysDig, which basically, it's a rules engine that finds abnormal behavior inside your containers. And on the third part, I'm going to show you an integration for, in, for automatically take some security actions when you receive a security alert. I mean, you are going to execute a playbook, a security playbook is the, actually is the name, when we receive an strange behavior automatically. I will explain why and how it's done. So runtime security. Basically, if we read some kind of book about security or even in the network book from Tannenbaum, we can conclude about this, the, these points. The first of all, the, of all of them is the trust boundaries. It's not the same to secure a, a, a staging environment than a production one. They are different. And perhaps things that you are allowing in, in, in staging must not be allowed in production. Though they should be as similar as possible, you know. But Anyway, you have to know which parts are talking which is ones. The second one is about to minimize the attack surface. I mean, it's not about installing, about not having all kind of programs installed in your, in your machine or even in your container. It's quite the same. It's, it, these are the principles. The next one is about reduce the access. Not everyone must to be allowed to, to, to enter to, to production. And finally, 
well, layer protection, okay? And finally, about trustability. Trustability is the, the, the forgotten place, the forgotten one, because we need to know what happened in the machine or in the container when we receive an attack. We, all of us are going to receive attacks. So we should get over that and start working on that. And this is the next point about, about, the, the, the secu the, about how containers change the rules. I mean, the first, the first point is, every time I, I, I see the first point, I, I love because it's, it's, really, uh, um, it's, it's really marketing conformant one. I love to, to explain that. In, in Spaniards, uh, tend to use a lot of a lot of popular sayings, a popular, and one of them is about we that nos acordamos de Santa Bárbara cuando truena. That means literally that we remember about Santa Bárbara when we hear the the thunderstorm. I mean, imagine Santa Bárbara is the is the virgin and protector for of all the sailors. Imagine you are in a boat and you are start sighing lightning bolts and hear thunder. So it's really probable that you are going to pass a bad time. I mean, the, 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 so the conclusion about that is that instead of praying, instead of, please, Santa Barbara, save me about, no, you can start to consider security because you are going to be attacked. So the next thing is about uh, containers are more ephemeral than machines. I mean, uh, last year we published a report about the, uh, the Docker usage of our customers, and the mean time of life cycle of a container was about seven days. That means that you can be attacked and you never notice about it. And that can be extended for a long time without, uh, you know, you don't have, how do you are going to, to, to know that you have been compromised? Finally, also the, um, the kind of attacks are changing. Perhaps most of you remind about the Ashley Madison scandal one. A lot of email, email addresses were, fil were filtered out, and, that, happened, and that, had, that caused a lot of troubles. Right now, we started to see other kind of attacks that are trying to abuse your infrastructure. In fact, <clears throat> I joined SysDig about one year ago, and I remember one of the first things I, I did was um, a, a potential customer that uh, we, we saw the, the secure part without any kind of troubles because they, uh, he mounted uh, the solution using, using the FTO cloud, fund, cloud fund formation stack. He, he mounted all the Kubernetes in AWS without the scaling groups. It was, was a nice piece of engineering how, how he did that. But, Next month, suddenly, he received a bill of about $25,000 of usage because someone entered to a pod, found the path to Kubernetes daemon, to Kubernetes, and started to spawn pods for doing crypto mining. You know, crypto is, crypto is hard, it's expensive, but if you are going to do, if you do it, with other money, it's, it's much more, more cheaper, you know. And finally, it's about tooling. Uh, your containers are lighter than the machine. Most of the times, you have no, no tools for, for doing any kind of, of forensic analysis. Imagine, for, for example, the, the Grissom from CCE Vegas doing the, the forensic stuff with the dead bodies and without any kind of tool or even without the body, because the container was out. How you can do a proper forensic analysis in that case? Well, this is the, the, the challenges that we face when, when we talk about, about security and containers. If we saw this like, like a home, we can focus on two parts. The first one is the, the prevention. In your house, you are going to lock the doors. Perhaps you have if you live in, in a ground floor, you are going to have bars in the windows. And on the other hand, we need to focus only on detecting intrusions. Once the attack has happened, how we can detect that the, attack, the attacker did or if the attacker is still inside. 
So we can, we can use some kind of motion sensors or internal cameras. It's pretty similar to containers. I mean, to prevent intrusions, we have things like passwords to, to password authentication. We can, we can also have some tools for doing some image scanning for determining if we are shipping, uh, we are shipping containers who has bugs or who has deprecated software or similar. Also, we have an admission controller in Kubernetes that is going to forbid to run certain kinds of, of images or pods, I mean, and also network policies for determining who, uh, who, which pod can talk with each other, I mean. And in the detection side, or purpose in, in, in CSD in, with Falco, it's about the system call instrumentation, you know, every time that someone tries to open a file for writing, to open some network connection, to try to execute something, we are going to try to instrument that system calls for gather some information about security. And the other is the, the new feature in Kubernetes 111, well, not so new yet <laughs> right now, but it's the audit login. Kubernetes is going to log everything, every operation that is happening in the cluster. So we can take advantage, take advantage about that. I mean, in containers, the, the game is a bit different because, you know, containers are just isolated process. We can see like, like, we can see like that. And in fact, if you know a, a bit about the Linux kernel, you notice that there's no any kind of container abstraction in the kernel. It's just a process with C groups and namespaces. It's a bit special process, but it's just a process. It's not so special. The image scanning is necessary, but it's not enough. That means that we can have several scenarios when we have a, a passing image, an, an image that, that is OK, but we have a new zero day vulnerability. How we can re scan that image? We need anything else. About the, 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 image, the, the image scanning is important and it's going to give you some confidence, but you need a bit more. And finally, it's about uh, a, a little bit misconcep misconception that container images are immutable. Yes, <clears throat> but not the container itself. A container is going to have some kind of operational drift in terms of some, uh, some containers write several things to the disk. Perhaps they can change some, some permissions. They are not immutables. The images are the immutable one, but not the container running itself. And the big question is how we can detect abnormalities. In this case, in runtime, we are going to cover the, like I said, zero day attacks. When we leak some credential to some place, we can detect that with, with image scanning on also perhaps some kind of or malicious activity. And, and the, uh, you know, the attack, the, the security world is very broad and no one knows what is going to happen next week, next month. You are going to be attacked, yes, but sometimes do you know, know how? But this, leave, this, this, this is the next part about that. OK, Falco. Falco is an, an, it's an open source tool, an open source software. Actually, it's a, a clone native, it's a project hosted under the, under the umbrella of the Cloud Native Foundation. And it allows to monitor the activities of our containers and raise some alerts when, when, <clears throat> when we found some kind of strange behavior. Uh, we will define what is strange behavior in, in a few minutes. The good stuff about Falco is that it has support for containers and its orchestrator, of course. I mean, we can know what's happening inside the container. This is the, this is the big part. I, I, I will show you a, a little demo before. Yeah. OK. How Falco works? Falco is deployed in your, in your cluster as a daemon set. That means that you will have one pod of Falco on each node of your cluster. That, that pod is going to, is going to, uh, is going to 
be intercepting all the system calls that are happening in that host and using the Kubernetes metadata API for doing the correlation. I know I can recite, I can know who, uh, I can know that someone tried to open a file. I, I need to know which pod, which process. I need to, to, uh, to augment the metadata for give some, re some nice, inf no, not nice, some useful information to the user. The good thing about this is that once you, you put Falco in your cluster, automatically everything that is running in your cluster is secured. I mean, you don't have to instrument your application. You don't have to inject some kind of code using ptrace, using preloading, or it's just kernel. And you don't need to do anything else from your container side. I mean, the same container that, that goes out from the CI/CD pipeline is going to be run in the, in the, in the cluster. And how Falco does this? This is, the, this is the architecture about how, how Falco works. We have, first of all, a kernel module that intercepts all the system call. We also, recently, we add another alternative for sourcing the, image, the, the system calls that is, uh, is an EBPF proof. Because you know, sometimes you are not allowed to, to, to load kernel modules in some environments. Well, we can do it with, with eBPF. And then, with the SysDig, the open source tool libraries, we can curry, yes, we can, yeah, we can cook a bit all the raw system calls with the Kubernetes metadata. And we have several filters on top of that, are the same filters as SysDig. We will, we will see that a bit later. And on top of that, we built a rules engine. That means when we match, a third time, a, a, yeah, a third time system call who matches against a rule, we are going to send an alert. What can be, for example, if we detect, and yeah, it's if we detect, for example, th th these kinds of system calls, an ESSEC, Imagine you are detecting an ESSEC and a beam bus. Sometimes some, someone spawn a cell in your container. Of if we receive an open. In, in root bin that perhaps is trying to modify your ls command. Or you detect that a connection has been opened to some place, or we are trying, starting to listening some incoming connections. We can trace that system calls and make, uh, yes, <laughs> I was following the dot. And we can make rules on top of that. And one of, uh, once, we detect an alert, we can send the alert to the syslog, to a file, to the standard output, or even run a shell command. Cool. This is the, the system calls that I anticipated. And when you see Falco words for first time, it's something like, like that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> A lot of people come to us, but this is a lot of overhead. Yeah, there actually is a lot of, there's a lot of system calls that is happening in a, in a production system. But well, it's, it's behaving properly, as far as I know. I, I know. So the real rules. One of the, one of the goals we have this year for Falco is to augment the amount of contributors that can contribute with, with rules. Rules actually is the is the GCS part to contribute to this open source project. So if you want to, to contribute, this is a good starting point for you. How a rule looks like is something like that. I'm going to explain you because the, the goal for this year is, is pretty ambitious. Uh, you know, if, if we want that people start to write some things like that, it's going to be hard. So. Basically, we have three building blocks. The first is the list, the second is a macro, and the third is a rule. The list is just a list. <laughs> no, pretty, pretty obvious, Capitano. <laughs> the second is a macro, then if you are used to work with C or C++ and the, and the preprocessor, it's the same. It's dumping the content of the macro on top of the text. You know, it's, it's pretty... It's pretty easy in term, it's pretty simple in terms of, of, of how it works, but it allows us to 
don't repeat the same expressions over different parts of the, of the code. And finally, the rule. In the rule, we have a name, a human description, and the important stuff is here in the condition. We are checking that it's a bind directory. Bind directory, it's this macro. The FD is the, is the sysdig class. We, we will see a bit later. The directory is in this list, bin, spin, user, user bin, or user bin. And, and we, uh, the event dirt is the address about, about, about writing. And we are opening for writing that file. And that opening is not caused, but any process that could be a package manager. I mean, if you are going to install something with APT, with RPM, with YAM, with, it's, going, it's likely to, to, it's going to install something in your binary directories. But in this case, someone is trying to write something in your bin directory. This is the same I, ex I, I, I explained by words. It is a uh, text to uh, the macros. It's text to use in other rules, the list, and the rules itself. So uh, perhaps I forgot about the priority and the output that is the message that we are going to, to send to, to the login. The, um, in this part, I would like to, to focus more on this part. It's about how Falco is going to evaluate the rules. Imagine that all the rules that Falco has is a big or, it's a giant or, and the point for making it fast is the second type, is the, is the second point. We need, it needs to have an event type. The event type is going to give us the name of the system call, so we can filter fastly. We can filter quickly about instead of just passing and, and, and process all the rules linearly. And that's the point. That's, that's, that's enough in, in, this play, in this topic. Yep. Oh. Too soon for, for some fails. <laughs> OK. 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 This is our, the, this our, the, the field classes. I, I, I explained a bit before. This is just an enumeration. I'm not going to talk to anyone explaining all the, all the system classes because it's a lot of information and doesn't, doesn't make any sense. You can find this information on the, on the CSD wiki on, on GitHub. So basically, take care about the, the event ones, the file descriptors we can access to, ST, to standard output or standard input. And finally, we have. This, this one, the, the KATS and KA, about this is metadata about Kubernetes. We will be, we will be back later on, on this. Another example, just for, for giving you some, sure, some mental agility uh, reading the rules, if, uh, in, the, in the blue part, we have the, the conditions. I mean, for example, a cell. The proxy name bash is running in a container. That means container ID is not a host of an overwriting in binary directories. And perhaps the most useful, one of the most useful one is this one. The event type is open. So I'm trying, is, is trying to open the file, and the file is the video. Instead of having a filthy tape on your webcam or similar, you can have a Falco rule for for detect unauthorized access to your camera. And this is another example. This is the last one, I promise. <laughs> this is the, that perhaps you think you are able to interpret it. In this case, we are detecting an execution in a container which starts with, with node, and the proc name is not node. That means we are trying to get up and running a process that is not anything related with, with JavaScript node, node yes, in this container. So, well, writing rules, as, as you have seen, can be 
can be hard, can be a bit cumbersome. Still, we don't have any kind of good development toolkit for writing rules. It, it's, we are working on, on that. But the good news is about Falco ships with a set of, of well-known of, no, of, of rules which implements best practices. I mean, if someone is trying to access to, to write a file in your ETC or in your bind directory, Falco is you're going to warn us. Imagine that someone is trying to read sensitive files like ETC shadow, like some, yeah, like the ETC shadow is, is a perfect example of if someone spawn a cell in, in a container. And also, we have, uh, you know, the, these rules are, well, uh, these rules are, are, are general purpose ones, but sometimes we need to tailor several, several rules more adjusted to the, to the kind of program that we are going to run. For example, we have rules for securing traffic or Redis, Mongo, Nginx. We have several, several rules in that repository, in Falco Security Profiles. As long as, as you, will, you will get the, the slides, I, this is a link, actually. So we can, we can take it out. Finally, I talk about, a lot of, about, about the audit log, about the system calls. And recently, we started to make that Falco to receive other events for, from other streams. For example, the Kubernetes audit log. In, uh, like I said before, in Kubernetes 1.11, every operation performed to the cluster is going to be recorded. And we can do that. We send that record to a webhook. And doing that, this is the, uh, allow me to go back a bit. This is this web server. We are going to, set, to configure Kubernetes to send the, the, audit, the, audit, the audit log to that web server so that we can, I'm going to go back to the, yeah, to the webhook, so that we can receive th things, uh, things like this one. I mean, this is, this is how uh, an audit event looks like. And this is the way how you remember the key A, the key A, the, 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 those classes, I mean, to access specific values in the Kubernetes event, event log. I mean, for, uh, the next one is a pretty good example. Do you recognize this, this rule? In this case, someone is trying to create a config map with a plain password. We don't want to do that. We have secrets. We can, we can work properly with Kubernetes to, to handle that, ki that kind of things. So we augment Falco, Falco capabilities, allowing, allowing it to receive more events from different data sources. We are working off on, on, an, uh, on more, on more uh, streams, I mean. And, whoopa. And a spoiler. <laughs> and this is the, the last point before, before the demo. We have Falco. Falco has a great capability detecting things, but we want to, to go one step further. I mean, we want to automate all the policy securities that we can run in a cluster. I mean, when you are handling a cluster that is about 300,000 300, nodes, and you recite that you, you have a, a cell in a container, in which node, in which container, more or less, in our customers, our data is about uh, the, dens the container density for, for, it, for each host is about, about 50 containers. So 50 containers, 300 uh, nodes, is about a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of pods to, to, to where to where things can be wrong. I mean, and when you receive an attack, you are going to pass a bad time. I mean, uh, sometimes you start to to look for for several insights, and you are actually are doing more damage that you are trying to prevent. 
in, in this case, responding to an event should be to, uh, like following a procedure. And, well, following a procedure, the, uh, you know, the humans have, another pro uh, have better capabilities than following several, rules, several uh, procedures step by step. So we can do it simply, um, simply scripting that, that actions. So we created that, a response engine. How the response engine works? Basically, we have Falco. Yeah. Yes. We have Falco right there. And we have a sidecar on top of Falco who adds more outputs capabilities. How we do that? We do that through a Linux pipe. We are going to do that Falco sends the error to a file, and that file, we receive that file in a sidecar. It's a, it's a solid pipe. So that when we receive a, a Falco alert, we can send it to NAS, and pull it, uh, to NATS and publish it to a topic. In this case, for the, the ones who, who doesn't know NATS, NATS is a message broker, something like you can think about RabbitMQ or, or, or ActiveMQ or, or quite similar. So we can subscribe to, uh, we, we can subscribe to several topics, in this case, based on the Falco, <coughs> on the Falco severity, and also on, on the Falco rule name. And for example, we can have a function for deleting a pod. Imagine we, de we detect we detect a cell in a container, and automatically we want to delete that, that pod. We are not solving the problem, but we are kicking out the problem. So it's the first line of, of defense, I, I mean. But also, we can send it to a proper CM like, like, like Splunk Phantom or the Misto, or perhaps if we detect an attack, we can isolate the attacker in, in, network, in networking terms. Or even if the, if the attack goes deeper, we can also change the node to forbid the scheduler to schedule more pods. In, the, in that node. So the machine has been compromised. Uh, anything else is going to be run here. And this is how we ideate the, the, the response engine. This is the version that I'm going to show you in the demo. But also, we port this to AWS technology. Instead of publishing, oh, yeah, go back. Instead of publishing, to NATS, we are going to public to SNS and use proper lambdas to react to the, to the security threats. And also, we port it to Google Cloud. So instead of publishing to, to NATS or SNS, you are going to publish to PubSub and use cl raw cloud functions to, to respond to the incidents. And also, in the case of Google, I want to say, because I, I am the, the father of that integration, I think Google announced it, ye announced it yesterday or, or a day before, but we have also an integration with the Cloud Security Command Center. That means the same way that we can send the, the alert to, to Phantom or to the Mistio, we can use the the Google, the Google software for, for, for tracking the, the state of the, of the intrusion. So I'm going to show you, oh, yes, OK. I'm going to show you what I did, I mean, OK. I have right here a Kubernetes cluster running on GKE. I'm going to to put it a little bigger. OK. Do you see it? Well, yes? Cool. Cool. Get nodes. And here, I have all the pods. I have, I'm going to explain. I have a Falco, a Falco diamond set uh, running in, in this cluster. And also, I have here an Nginx deployment for 
for, for, for attacking Nginx, I mean. I, I just, yeah, just install Falco with these capabilities. First one is Helm. Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. I don't know if how, how, how many of you knows about that. I'm going, I install Falco, enable, enable, uh, enabling an integration to NATS. And next one, I create the deployment of Nginx. And on the other side, I deployed a couple of playbooks. One, to delete the pod where we receive a writing below the root directory and isolate the network when we recite, uh, when someone is trying to touch something under, bin, uh, under a binary directory. So this is, this one's, the Falco delete and the Falco isolate are the pods that are running the, the, uh, those functions, I know. So I'm going to exec nginx. I'm going to, I'm inside of Nginx, I update, update. For example, I update install core. OK. It's install core. We could Google, Google is just wearing us, but If I create a file under bin, then I'm isolated. I can go out. <laughs> what? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to, to be like, like Steve Jobs. I, one thing more, it's about if I touch, I, I touch the file under under the, the root directory, the pod is gone. Automatically, and this is the first line of, def of defense. As, as, you can, as you can see, the pod is going to be recreated under other place, but this, this is the first line. What the, the, the stuff that happened here is about, Falco warned us about the security event, not, uh, we published the the topic to NATS, and NATS subscribe to the to the kubeless function. Sorry. And four minutes, and that's everything on my side. I hope you enjoy. Any questions? Ah, yep. Vanessa, Vanessa. Hi. Hi. Uh, thanks uh, for the talk, Fair first. Uh, I wanted to know if uh, when we are running things in Kubernetes, yes. uh, we are running uh, container images that yes. uh, most likely we haven't built. Yes. So we don't really know uh, how this container is supposed to be acting. Yes. So is there any kind of convention that someone, when you are creating a Docker image, that you can include some metadata not for Falco to know? Not really, but we are working. I, I don't know if that feature is going to land on Falco, but we are working, perhaps at the end of the quarter we'll be ready, about a capability for making Falco to work with machine learning for knowing how is the normal behavior of a container. So we can have several golden containers, for saying uh, in that way, and everything that, happen, that happens outside, the, outside, that, blah, 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 outside that system calls mm -hmm. are going to, to be killed, are going to be worn, I mean. But this model about uh, the normal behavior of a container is, yes. is supposed to be coming from the author yes. of the image? Yes. OK. Yes. Thank we you. are working on that. We did or the first in the, we did some experiments, but worked really bad. But that, that happened about one, one year ago. You know what I mean? In a year, a lot of things can, can happen. But I think that perhaps in Secure, the, the commercial product built on top, of, on top of Falco, perhaps this feature will land this quarter. Okay. The baselining, baselining one. It's 
If you don't mind another question, I'd like to know also if there is any stats about the performance overhead of uh, Falco. The overhead for Falco, I don't have enough data for Falco, but the data of the underlying part, the agent, the, in, the, in the agent side, the commercial agent, is about 3-4% of the CPU. Mm -hmm. it's, so Falco will be more or less quite similar. Okay. The, the, yeah, the, the agent also sends the, the metric information to, to a collector. Um, perhaps it's, it's just input and output operations. So I think more or less in that way. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.